My name is Danny, this is the Texas Trailhead, and today we're at Lost Maple State Natural Area. It's January 12th when I'm recording this, and January 12th is an important day for me and Lost Maples because it was the last time I was at this park in 2020, so a year ago today. Um, it's also the day I decided to stop drinking. So this is my year anniversary for this park and sobriety, so I'm pretty excited on two levels. So um, I'm doing a couple different trails today, but let's see uh, what I can find. It's sunshiny, but it's really cold out, so I'm looking forward to doing a new part of this park. So come along with me as I hike at Lost Maples State Natural Area. So I decided today to do the West Trail clockwise down to the West East Trail. So a year ago when I was here we did the right side of the park. Today I'm doing the left side. I'm a little concerned that I might have gone the wrong way. Same loop but maybe do it counterclockwise because it was a fun little uphill trek right from the get-go but I think now I'm starting to get my bearings and catching my breath because that was not crazy but just a little steep from the very beginning so trails are a little wet on some sections it isn't as irrigated as some of the other parks so not only are there some slick rocks but there are some sections that are just a little wet, but it's all right. Nothing looks like it's too heavily traversed, so it should be fine, but I'm trying to stay on the rocks as much as possible not to do, as to not do any damage to the, to the trails or anything, so. If you've never been to Lost Maples and you're thinking about doing the West Trail, you're going to get to a point where it tells you to go right. But right after that sign, you're going to see a little like upward rock ledge step staircase thing. And then to the right of that, you're going to see kind of like a stone rock river basin. The river basin is the way you're going to want to go. Just keep going straight. Eventually you'll get to the end and you'll see the other little trail marker letting you know just to keep going straight. The West Loop also features um, what you would call a grotto. The main one is on the east side of the park. But this one's just as cool too.
All right, it looks like we're almost halfway here at the uh, chemical toilet. I'm about to go up to the Mystic Canyon and then keep going around here up on top, past Primitive Campsite G, start making our way down. Taking a little breather on the West Trail. I'm here in between a handful of the primitive campsites. Um, this is a spot where the chemical toilet is, so that's a good indicator. Um, it is a primitive area in the in the natural park, so there aren't any restrooms throughout the the park besides the day use area and the headquarters. So keep that in mind if you're planning on spending a few days here. They are all primitive sites. I'll tell you what, that little uh, pit stop couldn't have come at a better time. Since I did this west trail clockwise, that whole stretch was uphill and the rocks were kind of slippery right now. So I was able to kind of take a little breather. Met two fellow hikers on the trail. They are part of one of the big hiking and backpacking in Texas groups on Facebook. So shout out to those two. It was really neat to catch my breath a little bit. Hopefully they didn't mind me gasping for air since I was going uphill. So uh, yeah, I was able to take a little breather. Sun's out right now and it's starting to warm up. I've already had to take off one of my vests that I have under my jacket because I was getting really hot. So um, I'm about to hit one of the canyons. So the temperature should drop a little bit, but that's fine. Um, If you watched my Colorado Bend video, you know sometimes that I call points of interest before I'm actually even there. That being said, I'm pretty sure I'm hiking through the Mystic Canyon now. It drops down a little bit and uh, very well shaded. One of the things on the kiosks is that the temperature drops a little bit. And, I don't know if it's just because of the shade or because I'm in the canyon, but temperature did go down a little bit. You're hiking along the little waterways and creeks that flow through the park, so you can hear the sounds of the water trickling because right now I don't really hear anything else besides that, so that's kind of cool. That's one of the other beauties of being in the natural areas. You're a little bit farther away from the city life and you're not hearing traffic. That being said, I think I did just hear a plane fly by. It's okay. That didn't spoil it. Um, one of the things about this park is that there aren't as many trail markers, so it's really important that you kind of pay attention to the, the pathways. And they have wooden arrows, too. Um, there are some sections where it's a little tricky, so just uh, be mindful of that and really don't rush it because you don't want to miss one of the markers and then veer off into the middle of the backcountry. So uh, one thing to keep in mind. So when we were here a year ago, I wasn't actually planning on giving up drinking that day. I uh, just been kind of dealing with a lot with work and personal life and being really stressed out. And you can head over to the Texas Trailhead website to learn a little bit more about kind of my decision. But we had a fun family hike like normal and then went out to dinner I was in the middle of dry January, so we went to our favorite pizza place, and uh, I I had a beer and a shot, and uh, that was it. Went home, 
And the next day, I just decided I was done. That was the last one. That was the last sip until this point. Uh, it's been a year, and uh, I don't regret it at all. I didn't know we were going to start during a global pandemic, but, you know, if anyone's watching this, this isn't really my full sobriety recap. This is just a minor detail of this hike, but, you know, if anyone's watching this that's feel like they don't know what to do or don't know how to reach out, you know, you can send me a message. The most important thing I want you all to know is there is a way out. Um, you know, I didn't b believe that for the longest time. I thought there was going to be all these things, roadblocks in my way that would prevent me from giving it up. But ultimately, I just made the decision for myself and for my family to stop. And thankfully, I have a really good support team with my wife and family, and they were able to encourage me, and I never felt pressured. Because, um, you know, I still hang out with people that do consume alcohol, and that's totally fine. Um, the decision is mine, and mine alone. So I have, so far, the the willpower to keep myself focused. And, you know, there's going to be some tough times along the way, but for the last 12 months, I've stayed strong, and I'm really proud of that. And I'm happy to be here at the park where I was a year ago to celebrate. One thing to keep in mind when you're on the West Trail is there's a West Trail and a West Loop Trail. The West Loop Trail is going to be for the primitive camping site. So you're just going to want to veer to the right if you're going clockwise. Otherwise, you're going to go off to a random section of the park that you don't really need to be in unless you're camping. So one of the little quirky parts about this park, some of the names are similar. so. Still a really good pace. You can see the little arrow behind me telling everyone else where to go in the other direction. The rocks here are pretty big, so it's a little easy to avoid as opposed to Colorado Bend when there was a bunch of smaller rocks kind of jetting out from the ground. Um, I'm curious to the, kind of look into what this place does when it's rained a lot because a lot of these trails really feel like dry creek beds and if it's rained a lot I don't imagine it's very easy to get woo, get through some of these places so I'm gonna put the camera away for a bit and navigate another one of these little creek beds remember earlier in the video when I was talking about narrating a portion of the trail and then coming to find out that that was wrong. Well, I just did it again. <laughs> I just did it again. I was over here blabbering about oh, walking on these creek beds. Well, I wasn't on the trail. That's why. Uh, I just got to the point. So I guess I missed one of the turnoffs. I'm back on the trail. So yeah, if it's raining, um, you won't be walking on that section. Hey, I'm not perfect. I'm just enjoying the trails like everybody else. There are some really magnificent views here. I don't know if you can see behind me. Some of the rock cliffs. While the main draw for this park is obviously gawking at maple trees, this park is still really pretty any other time of year, so... Don't feel like you can only come in the fall when all the other people are wanting to check out the trees. Don't get me wrong, it's 
magnificent to check them out, but like I said, it's still a fun park. It is so awesome to come to a park you've been to before and experience it in a whole new way. Besides the obvious that I'm on a different section of the park, but still like the water running through it, all the colors that are changing, I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to come visit these parks and share these hikes with you. Yeah, a handful of people here at the park. Everyone's been really nice and they're all here for a variety of reasons, either backpacking to their primitive campsites or birding. Just met a couple that were here shooting some photographs for some birds that you can find. I know there's a lot of hawks that can be found at this natural area, so that's pretty cool. My camera lens, I don't think is strong enough to do stuff like that, but getting some good landscape shots.
Thanks for coming along to Lost Maples State Natural Area with me. I'm Danny. This is the Texas Trailhead. Until next time, grab your backpack, put on your hiking shoes, and let's go on another adventure. This is the Texas Trailhead.